Okay, hello everyone. In this video, I'm just gonna walk through, uh, I wanna say a pretty simple example for how to perform image classification using the Orange software tool. I uh, won't be going into the details of the various models that we could apply or anything like that. I'll just show you how to set up the environment in Orange so that you can perform the tasks and, and then leave you know the other details of tinkering with different settings and different models. Uh, I'll leave that up uh, for you to do as kind of a separate activity. The data set that I'm going to be using, uh, I'm pulling down from Kaggle, and I'll include the URL in the description. It's just a natural images data set. Um, there are almost 7,000 images in, in the set with eight, dis eight distinct classes. So if, if you want to work with the same data that, that I'm going to be using, you can find it there. Um, if you have other image data available that you want to use, of course you can use that too. But if you want to follow along with the same type of, of data, then I recommend you go to Kaggle and download that data set so you can use it and, and follow along. I've already downloaded and extracted the, the data, so I've got it here on my desktop in this image set directory. And once it's extracted, you can see there are two folders inside. There's natural images and a data folder. Inside the data folder is just kind of like a copy of the natural images. So um, I'll leave the natural images out here kind of as the, the original, and then I'll do my work inside of this, this data folder. And once we're in here, you can see we've got um, airplanes, cats, cars, dogs, flower, fruits, uh, motorbike, and persons. Uh, so these are the distinct classes for which images are available. <clears throat> you could choose any of these to, to work with, but you know, just to choose one to move forward. Um, what I think we'll do is we'll just look at cats and not cats, just to make it really simple. You could, you could train a model to classify for all of these things, but I just want to focus on one to kind of keep it a little bit simpler. Um, but feel free to, to include multiple classes in your example um, if you want to see how that looks. There are other videos online that you can find that also uh, demonstrate how to do the image classification in Orange with a number of other classes. So um, what I'm going to do is, again, tr split into to two sets. We'll have a training set, and then I'll also have a, a test set so we can see how the model performs when there are no... Uh, labels for for our data. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm inside this data folder again. I'm just going to create a, a new folder. I'm going to call it training. And inside the training folder, uh, I want to have my uh, two classes that I'm going to look for. I'll actually have two windows open just to make this a little bit easier. So inside of the training folder, I want to have my cat instances and then I'll create another folder which is just simply uh, not cats <laughs> just to keep it simple and then what I'm going to do is from the natural images set we'll go into the cat folder you'll see there's lots uh, of cat images available you you could select most if not all of them if, if you wanted to but um, the more images you select the longer it will take the the model to process them so I'm just going to you know kind of limit it to 100 um, but feel free to choose more if you have time and, and you don't mind kind of waiting around. It doesn't take too, too long if you have a decent machine, but can take a little bit of time. So I'm just going to select the first uh, 100 here. I'm going to copy those into my cat training folder. So now I've got 100 kind of training instances or examples Okay, for cats. And then for the not cats... We're just going to choose a, a couple from some other uh, areas. So maybe we'll, we'll throw a couple dogs in there. So I'll throw 10 dogs in to my not cat. Maybe we'll throw some flowers in. So I'll throw in um, 10 flowers. We'll throw in some fruits. And... For the heck of it, why don't we throw in some motorbikes? Okay, so the only thing that's kind of close to cats would be dogs. Um, if you had, you know, you wanted to really get detailed with it, you could have in the not cat directory a, a number of other animals that are very similar or, or images of shots of other things that look very similar to cats. But um, again, the purpose of this video is just to kind of work through the process to show you how to set it up. You know, the, the actual samples and examples you use um, 
to run it on are up to you. So I, again, encourage you to experiment a little bit and play around with the different images that you might have um, access to. So that's, that's kind of good for setting this up. So we have our training data for cats and not cats. And then what I want to do is also create a testing uh, set of data. So this our, this will be our, our, our unlabeled uh, examples. And this will be, we'll use to test how well the model performs when we don't, um, you know, for like new samples that we didn't have them classified yet. And so I'm going to do the same kind of thing here. Uh, we'll choose a couple of cats. Make sure you don't choose, you know, cats from the same sample. So I just choose the first hundred. So what I can do here is choose, um, I'll just choose 10, uh, the 10 after the, the 100 we initially selected for training. So and inside the testing directory, I'm not going to have, you know, cat, not cat, because we want these to be unlabeled. So I'm going to put cats in all of the images just together in kind of a big basket. And the task for our, our, our learner will be to looking in this basket, determine, you know, which of these images are classified as cats and, and which ones aren't. So don't, don't put any more folders inside testing. We're just going to dump a big basket of images in here. So we'll put some cats in, um, we could put in some cars. Uh, I'll throw in a couple of dogs again. So I chose the first 10. So I'll choose, you know, maybe five here. Um, and maybe we'll throw in some, some fruit as well. Okay, so I got a couple of examples here that we run. Now, of course, we expect the cats to be properly classified and everything else to be classified as not cat. Um, and the nice thing about these images are the names. So even if we don't have a label for them when we do the testing, and you'll see what I mean when we get in there, we can determine whether or not the predictions are correct based on the, the label that's been applied and the name of the file. So I would expect that, you know, if everything is good, that all of the cat underscore named files would be properly labeled as cats and everything else would be labeled as as not cat so once we have those uh, this kind of data set up we can uh, fire up orange so if you haven't already done so you can start this up it takes a second on my machine there we go and i'm going to create a brand new um, workspace here Something you're going to need uh, to perform the image analysis are, is the, the add-on for image analytics. So if you don't have that available um, from options, you can go to add-ons and then it'll retrieve a list of packages. And then once that's done, you can filter it down by just typing an image. And so make sure you selected the image analytics uh, add-ons for this. Um, once you install it, I think it will ask you to restart orange. So if that's the case, then yeah, let it do its thing, restart it, and then you should see the image analytics piece here. In, in performing image classifications, very similar to how we would have done the classification earlier with just you know numeric or already kind of text-based data, in that you first need to load your data in, and you can load in kind of training and then test data separately. So we would have done this previously using like a file widget, but now because we're working with images, we want to import um, you know a little bit differently. So we use the import images widget. So you can drag that on. I'm going to rename this. Um, training. So it's going to represent my, my training data that's coming in. And what we can do is you double click this widget and it will bring up a little dialogue so we can go to select where uh, our files are. So again, on my desktop, I've got my image set folder under data and I want to select my, my training folder. Don't, don't go in there and select, you know, cat, not cat, just choose training. And then when you do that, you should see that it identifies there are 140 images which makes sense. We had a hundred, um, cat images and we had 40 that were not cats. And you can see that it recognizes those subdirectories as categories. So we've got the cat and not cat categories. If you want to view the, the images that you've pulled in, you can use the image viewer widget. So I'll just drop that on there and you can connect these two and then double clicking on the image viewer. You can see the little thumbnails of all the images that are included, um, that have been loaded, um, via this import images widget. So we can see here all the cats and then further down, we can see all the things that we've identified as not cats. And you can also 
you know, do some filtering or whatever here, changing the size, but I'll just stick with the default for now. So that's good. This looks like the proper image set. If you wanted to give it a once over to make sure you hadn't, you know, made any mistakes, you know, that one of these cats is in fact not a cat. Um, but I feel pretty confident the data is pretty, pretty clean. So we don't have to worry about that here. So once you've, you've kind of loaded them in, the, the next thing we need to do is kind of take these and convert them into a format that the machine can understand because image files on their own are interesting, but they're, they're not something that can be looked at um, analytically. So what we can do is we can use the M image embedding uh, widget. So if you select that and drop that onto the canvas, we can hook that up to our, our training import images widget. And what that'll do is it'll create a vector representation of all of the images that were loaded in. So, and you can um, drag this out to like a data table and then see what the embeddings data looks like if you want to. So here you can see our 140 instances and how they've been converted from image files. Um, you know, there's a whole pile of features that have been added for each one of these things. So again, I'm, we're not gonna take time to look at all these and what they are, just to kind of take for granted that um, they're good. <laughs> so they've been converted from images into vector data that can now be analyzed um, by our, our models. So that's kind of nice. So that just does it for you. Um, we don't need this anymore. I can get rid of that. But if you're interested, of course, you could, um, you know, poke around at the data table, have a look at some of the data and, and, and do whatever you need to do. So once that's uh, kind of done, um, if we if we look at the embedding settings, you'll see here uh, how this works. There's the image attribute, which coming from our, our um, import images widget is just going to be our image. This is fine. You can leave that. It's the only thing that's there. But then there are a number of different embedders that you could choose from. So right now I've just got kind of the, the default one that came up, which is Inception V3, Google's uh, model that's trained on ImageNet. But there are a number of other models available. Um, SqueezeNet, I believe, runs um, if you don't have a connection to the internet. So if, if you're kind of in spotty Wi-Fi or something like that, you might want to choose SqueezeNet. But, you know, otherwise the other ones, they essentially take advantage of the online connectivity and, and run them through online models. So um, I'll, I'll leave that one for now because it works pretty quickly and I have pretty good network connection here. But just keep that in mind. There are different embedders here. And if you want more information about how they work, then, you know, go in and research that on your own. Maybe I can cover something like that in, in another video. Um, but yeah, so you can see we had 140 instances coming in and we got 140 going out. Um, and we already seen those in the data table. So that's kind of how uh, that works. The next thing we can do is perform some unsupervised learnings or so we could drop in, um, you know, pairwise distance matrix to kind of create the distances between those images and cluster them essentially. And then if we wanted to, to view the results, we could drop in a hierarchical clustering uh, widget and then it'll kind of show us how it's, how it's grouped those instances. I mean, there's things you can look at, you know, and hear a few details and things, but again, I'm not going through the specifics. I'm just going to show you how to lay this out. So once we are looking at the hierarchical clustering, you can kind of see how these are broken down. They're kind of meaningless because, you know, all we have here are, are numbers. Um, but you can see it's clearly doing some kind of classical a classification and a hierarchy. So there's kind of a, from the top here, a grouping over here and the groupings to the, to the bottom. And you can kind of explore those. Uh, the nice thing about these being images is that we can actually kind of see them and how they've been, been uh, clustered. So if we go back to the image analytics section, you can drop in another image viewer. Then you can connect these two and where what we'll see here is the selected data from the hierarchical clustering being rendered in the image viewer. So here's the, the hierarchical clustering. If we open the image viewer, there's no selected data, so nothing shows up. But if you go back, um, then you can kind of choose these clusters and see how the, the model has kind of broken them down. So it looks like in this top level, we've got, you know, these are all not cats, which is good. Um, they look like they're kind of like clusters of flowers or maybe fields of flowers. If we go to the other side, we can kind of see what's over here and everything else. So this this includes cats uh, at the at the top level, and then of course it will include you know some not cats as well. And then we can see how it's further broken down. So you can I don't want to say have some fun with this, but you can explore um, how these classifications are done and at what level we we start to see you know cats separated from uh, from the other things that are not cats, for example. And if you wanted to view uh, multiple classes, so we can see here are some cats. 
Um, if you if you hold control or command on the Mac, you can you can get multiple classes. So here I've got class one, class two. Um, you know, we go right down to the very bottom here. Let's try class three as well, and then you can kind of see um, everything that's been selected there. There's a title attribute too you could use, but category is probably the one you want to go with. So you can have some fun kind of exploring in here um, where the different classifications lie. Oops. All right, so here we can see there are um, motorbikes. It, it thinks this one, not cat, which is a dog, is also a motorbike. <laughs> so there's some interesting things in there you, you, could, uh, you could see. So this, this model would fail if it were trying to identify, um, you know, bikes because it would, I mean, it would fail. It does a pretty good job, I guess, but it's got one dog in there. So yeah, you can have some fun exploring and, and seeing what comes out. Um, but for the most part, I think uh, the model is doing a pretty, a pretty good job. So the next thing we can do, um, I mean, that's, and that's kind of a quick way to just kind of see the classifications and visualize them. So that's, that's like one thing that could be useful on its own is just to see, you know, we have a, a number of images how are they classified and how are they grouped? So, you know, if you had like a, a bunch of different fruits, for example, you could throw them in here and then you could, you know, if you didn't have labels for them, you could see if the model was able to kind of identify different types of fruits simply in those, um, those clusters based on whatever features were pulled out during the image embedding phase. So but what we want to do is kind of work with um, performing classifications. So this is where we kind of get back into um, like the evaluation um, phase. Um, so what we can do here is start to to drag on some of our evaluation and model stuff here. So if we go to the evaluate section, you could drop in a, a test and score so that we can kind of see how well this is doing. And then in addition to that, we also need some models. So because we're performing classification, you want to make sure you use you know models that are well suited to classification and not prediction. Logistic regression is, uh, is a good one. Um, you know, you might use something like naive Bayes. I'll just drop two on here for now so we can kind of see how those work. And then what we can do is we can hook these things up to um, the class and, uh, sorry, the test and score widget, and we can see how that looks. So let's just connect um, these two learners. And then I'm just going to drop the data from our image embedding. And so you'll see it takes a little bit of time to, to test and score based on the images that you kind of pulled in. And so this is what I was mentioning earlier. Like I'm, I'm only using 140 images here. If, um, if you run it on like the full, the full data set, it's going to take you a little while. You're going to go make some dinner and come back. So just be, be aware of that. If you, if you pile in a whole bunch of images, this could take a little bit of time. Okay. And so once that's done, we can kind of open this up. We can get uh, our test and score widget. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about these measures, um, but we can kind of see how these do perform. You know, overall classification accuracy for logistic regression is, is, is clearly a bit better than naive Bayes, but they both perform really well. Uh, but the, uh, the log regression is kind of, you know, once right across the board in terms of precision and recall even. So the naive Bayes performs a little bit poorly um, in those areas. And if you wanted to visualize the results even further again, you could drop on, um, oops, under evaluate a confusion matrix. And I'm, I might put together a little video on the confusion matrix as well. Um, some people had asked me about some of the different measurements that can come out of the confusion matrix. So, um, look for that. I might do that in the, in the coming weeks here, but we can open this up and kind of see how they perform. So the, again, the log regression, uh, learner was able to get hundred percent kind of accuracy. It found all hundred cats and 40 not cats. Naive Bayes was a, a little bit off. They found in this case, 96 of the cats, but incorrectly, you know, predicted for the cats that were not cats. So. Um, we, we, and we can visualize this too, right? So these predicted not cats that were cats, we want to see what they look like. You can kind of do the, the same thing. So I think this should work. We should be able to drag another image viewer and connect these two. And then we can select the data here. I'll get both of those together again here. So if we select those outliers here, right on the diagonal is where we get the the proper true classifications, and then we get misclassifications off the diagonal. So here we can select the things that were predicted as not cats, but where we can see them here. So yeah, for whatever reason, they maybe maybe thought you know these were a dog or something, or just didn't didn't register with the training data. So I mean, this could be resolved too if we were able to provide you know more data. Um, it's hard to say, but 
anyway, we can kind of go in there and visualize where the, the errors were. And if you wanted to correct for that, you could try to tweak the model a little bit. You could try to tweak the learner, for example. Maybe there's some, you know, things you could change on some of the learners, what have you. But that being said, we've identified kind of our better model, which is the log regression. So that's the one that we'll go with to run over our, um, over our tests. Uh, the, well, the other thing we didn't, uh, um, no, that's good. We'll, we'll run the predictions widget and then we'll, we'll kind of see how that works with our, our test data. So this is kind of like the initial setup, right? We kind of did some exploration here. We, we converted them, you know, had a view over the classifications and now we've kind of looked at some models and, and seen which ones per perform the best. And so now we can kind of mimic this setup on the top here below for our, our test data and see how, how well it performs. So let's try again, another import images. I'm going to rename this one testing and we can go ahead and again, I'm just, I'm going to go into my image set folder data. And now I just want to select the test folder. There's nothing in there, but just remember kind of this basket of images. So, so that's good. We should see, we've got, you know, 30 images. If you wanted to put more on there, you could again, for, for time's sake, I'm just choosing a, a small sample. So we've got 30 images in there. That's fine. We can do the same thing with our image embedding. If you want to make sure you're using the same kind of model, you can just duplicate. Um, and so we'll do that. Takes a minute to run. All right. And so then once we have that, uh, we want to do kind of a similar thing here. Uh, let me, I want to move some things around a little bit. So let's duplicate our log regression. I mean, if you had made some of these don't really have settings, but if you had made changes to the settings in these models, you want to maintain those or retain them, just duplicate your, your learners, or you could, you know, drag another one from the, the model section over here. That's fine. Um, we also, from the evaluate section, we want predictions now. And so we want our training data to come into the learner. And then from here into the predictions, and then we want our data to kind of populate in here as well. And so now when we open this up, we can see, uh, our cat versus not cat labels and how they've been applied, um, to the incoming test data. Because we don't have labels for these things. Um, we're not really going to be able to like, um, like see a confusion matrix or anything like that because it doesn't know what the actual labels are but like this is what i was mentioning at the beginning because the images are named kind of with the classification in front we can kind of at a glance see um, how well this performs so if we just sort by the logistic regression column here we can see you know it's identified here a couple of cats these are all properly aligned so based on this like again our test basket of, of 30 images the model was able to correctly classify our, our 10 cats and then everything else, the cars, the dogs, and the fruit were all properly classified as not cats. And so, yeah, I, the model here in this case is pretty, pretty trustworthy. And so that's, that's kind of it. That's the process that you can use for performing image classification in orange Again, it's pretty straightforward and very similar to, you know, what you would do if you were doing this with, um, you know, numeric data and not just images. Uh, but I encourage you to go and find some different data sets online and, and try to mess around with different uh, models, right? There are different embedders that you can choose. I'm just choosing kind of the default here, which is Google's inception. But uh, again, I mentioned there are others. You can see how well they perform, what the differences are and start reading up about uh, what the differences are and, and how they perform. But, um, yeah, again, I hope you found this useful and educational. And, uh, like I mentioned, I think some people had asked for a confusion matrix a video. So I'll, I'll look to put something together here pretty quickly. It's been a little while since I posted, but I'll, I'll try to get that together in short time here and post it as well. So, um, until the next time, um, hope you guys do well and stay safe.